Hi, everybody. My name is Angela Gulick, and I work for the Writing Lab here at Parkland College. This short workshop is entitled Agreement Review, Point of View. The goal of this workshop is just to provide kind of a general overview of this topic, sort of a quick refresher course. If you want some additional information on this topic or many others, check out the Center for Academic Success Resources page. That holds all of our handouts, our other PowerPoint presentations, and our videos. Finally, at the end of this presentation, there will be some online resources you could check out, including some that have online exercises that you can take to quiz yourself. But let's start with some basic definitions. When we talk about point of view, all we mean is the relationship that exists between the writer, the reader, and the text itself. And there are three main points of view, first, second, and third person point of view. First person point of view means that the writer is telling us of events that he or she was a direct participant in. So sort of like someone giving an eyewitness report. Second person point of view shifts the focus away from the writer and puts the focus more on the reader. And third person point of view is more like a newspaper article where we don't know who's telling us the story, we just know the story. The focus is on the information, not so much who told us, and not so much who's reading it. But let's get a little bit more specific with these. You'll know that you're reading first-person point of view when you use words or read words like I, me, my, mine, we, our, us, and ours. And the focus in first-person point of view is on the author's thoughts, opinions, and experiences. Or in the case of a work of fiction, on the narrator's thoughts, opinions, and experiences. What you do need to remember with first-person point of view is that everything is being filtered through that individual. And so you should ask yourself, what am I being told? How much can I trust what I'm being told? Do I trust this person, this voice? And also, what is it I'm not being told? Some common examples of first-person point of view are things like diaries, personal letters, and personal email messages. Some types of legal documents, such as wills and eyewitness testimony, will use first-person point of view. And as I mentioned a moment ago, in many works of fiction, the narrator is part of the story, and the narrator is telling us that story, again, filtered through his or her perception. In terms of the effect on the reader, first-person point of view definitely creates a bond or a connection between the writer and the reader. And readers sometimes put a lot of trust and faith in first-person testimony, thinking, well, this person was part of the story, so I should really trust his or her uh, interpretation of the events. But you also need to be aware that with first-person point of view, what you might be getting is somebody's biases, misconceptions, prejudices, errors in judgment. Sometimes you might even be told out and out lies. So with first-person point of view, again, you just always need to ask yourself, how much can I trust this voice, this writer? What am I being told and what am I not being told? Whereas first-person point of view keeps the focus on the writer, second-person point of view has now shifted that focus over to the reader of the information. Pronouns that are used in second-person point of view are words like you and all its versions, your, you are, yours, also, direct commands. If you were to come to my home and ring my doorbell, I would say, hi, come on in, have a seat. I'm telling you, you who rang my doorbell, come inside. You who rang my doorbell, have a seat. So any direct command is considered second person point of view. And again, the goal of second person point of view is to make the reader involved, to sort of suck the reader into the information. Common examples will be anything involving instructions or directions, because if you think about it, all those are, are a series of commands. Often political speeches will include second-person point of view, because the person doing the speaking wants each individual to reflect on the information. So here's an example from a speech by President John F. Kennedy. Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Using you and your language means the, that President Kennedy was reaching out to each person hearing that speech. And finally, advertisements use second-person point of view big time. They want to suck those listeners in or suck those readers in so that the reader can think, oh my God, how have I lived my entire life without owning this product? 
So if you look at these examples, one from McDonald's, you deserve a break today. One from the Army, be all that you can be. One from Nike tennis shoes, just do it. And again, the effect on the reader is that readers feel that they are being spoken to directly. They may feel even a little bit more involved in the information, but they should be aware they might be being manipulated by that author as well. And finally, third person point of view. Remember, first person focuses on the writer, second person focuses on the reader, but third person point of view focuses on the information itself. We don't care who's telling us and we don't care who's reading about it. We just want the facts. Pronouns that you'll see in a third person point of view, there's quite a list there. He, him, his, she, her, hers, and so on. Also, just nouns, the hunter, the doctor, the president, that rabbit. And finally, people's names, Sam, Dean, Bobby, Joe, Ellen, Cass, John, Mary, Rufus. If any of you are fans of the show Supernatural, that's where I got all those names. And again, with, with third-person point of view, the focus is on the subject matter itself. The perception is that you're just getting the facts without any sort of interpretation or bias. Notice I say that's the perception, because it doesn't automatically mean that you're getting just the facts. Examples are things you would see in your college life, college textbooks, magazines, newspaper, journal articles, reports, and also reports, or excuse me, works of fiction, where the narrator has stepped away from the action, is not part of the action, is merely reporting on it. Sort of that fly on the wall idea. And again, with third person point of view, the focus is on the information itself. And there's this perception that we are just getting the facts, that it's unbiased and it's purely factual. But you have to be very careful and not make assumptions. Just because something's written in third-person point of view doesn't mean that it, it isn't twisted or spun in, in a particular way. You want to use criticism and skepticism as you would with any other point of view. So what's the big deal? The big deal deals with point of view consistency because people can get really confused if you do a shift in the middle of a sentence. Let's look at this example here. My all-time favorite summer activity is riding on a jet ski, and I love it when you feel the wind and spray in your face. The first part of the sentence in red uses first-person point of view. We see words like my, I. But the green part has, has for some reason, switched into second-person point of view using you and your. Now, if we were going to literally interpret this sentence, what I would have to envision is someone who really loves riding a jet ski, but who has you sitting behind him or her, and so the person saying, I love to jet ski, but I love it even more when you feel the wind and spray in your face. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It gets awfully confusing. So what you want to do is try to keep everything in first person or second person or third person within the boundary of a sentence, unless you have a very specific reason for making that switch. So in this case, if the sentence would have said, my all-time favorite summer activity is riding on a jet ski and I love it when I feel the wind and spray in my face, we would have been A-OK. -okay. But it's that just sort of arbitrary switch in the middle of a sentence that gets us confused. What am I supposed to focus on? Am I supposed to focus on the speaker or am I supposed to focus on my own response? And also think about it, it this way, and I'll use myself as, as an example. I have never been on a jet ski. So when I read, when you feel the wind and spray in your face, that's never happened to me. So there's kind of a disconnect there as well. So like I said, you just want to try to be consistent within a sentence. And there you have it. If you have any other questions about point of view or other writing topics, please feel free to come by the writing lab in room D120. Remember that we have additional workshops and handouts on our CAS resources page. And finally, I've listed some links here of additional information that you can go to. This first one, Grammar Bytes, is a really fun website. It has interactive exercises that use sound effects and graphics. Just be aware that the first time you use the site on your computer, you might be asked to download a little program. It's simply so that you can use the graphics and the sound effects. Other than that, we wish you much good luck with your writing, and thank you for your time today. Goodbye.